Hey, welcome to another uh, edition of our new Downward MMT. Well, not our, but new Downward MMT. Uh, hey, once again, I am uh, reading from the textbook uh, for monetary theory, uh, macroeconomics, brought to you by uh, William slash uh, Bill Mitchell, El Rondo Ray, Martin Watts. And I'm on chapter three, which is on 38, page 38. Chapter 3, A Brief Overview of Economic History and the Rise of Capitalism. The learning objectives are recognized that the dominant mode of production involves throughout history and can be overthrown. Recognize that while all societies face questions over production and distribution of the means of uh, subs subsistence, including food, clothing, and shelter, they have created a variety of modes of production and distribution. Understand that the current dominant form around the globe is capitalism, but this system is relatively new, being only a few hundred years old. For most of the human history, or for most of human history, rather, uh, people have lived under other types of economic systems. Acknowledge that capitalism has evolved and may change fundamentally in the future, but there is nothing natural or uh, everlasting about our current mode of production. 3.1 Introduction In this chapter, we will briefly examine what makes capitalism different from other economic systems. It is Important to understand that humans have all not always organized their economies around money. Throughout most of human history, the ec the economy either operated entirely without money or with money playing a relatively uh, unimportant role in the provisioning process. However, with the rise of capitalism. It is not misleading to say that money came to play a dominant role. Hyman Minsky even argued that our modern capitalism or capitalist system should be uh, should be analyzed as a financial system. We should not, however, link the use of money only to the capitalist economy. Money has existed for at least four thousand years, while capitalism's origins. Can, can be traced back approximately half a, mil, a millennium. To be sure, money's origins are not known and might never be known, but there is no doubt that money was used for thousands of years before capitalism rose to re replace feudalism. This chapter starts by noting that capitalism makes, oh, sorry, takes different forms. We briefly uh, analyze different modes of production. Which has which have preceded capitalism, namely tribal society, slavery, and feudalism, and then examine the transition to capitalism. The repercussions of global capitalism are explored before we speculate about economic systems of the future. Three point two. An uh, instruction to, mon to mon monetary capitalism. Today, the major nations have economic systems that conform to the general structure that is called capitalism. Sometimes these are inaccurately called market systems, a term that is both too general uh, or markets pre predate capitalism by thousands of years and too narrow. While markets are certainly important to capitalist systems, they are only a part of the economy. They are also called mixed economies to indicate that the government sector as well as the private sector is important in the economic process. A somewhat more technical description used by some economists, including Marx and Keynes, is a monetary production economy. This captures the primary purpose of production to profit, denominated in the money of account, which is a measure denomination of value used in keeping accounts. While that description does draw attention to the importance of money and the profit motive, it again seems to neglect the role played by government, which is not operated for monetary profit. 
For that reason, the simple term capitalism seems more appropriate for our purpose. Marx considered the differential uh, differentia uh, specifica of capitalism to be its organization of production, by which the owners of the means of production could secure surplus labor from workers who, who only had their labor power to sell in order to survive. By surplus labor, Marx meant labor that was performed in excess of the labor necessary to produce or to produce the means of livelihood for the worker or necessary labor. He thus distinguished the capacity uh, capacity to do work labor power from the physical act of working labor. It should not be thought that sh there is only one monolithic form of capitalism with uniform, carefully del del delineated there we go, institutions, rules of behavior, and rules for government and other sectors. Capitalism takes a wide variety of forms from a system comprised mostly of small-scale farms with a lot of the production farmed out to households employing simple tools to a, to a system utilizing modern large-scale industrial production with literally thousands of highly skilled and unionized workers per factory. Fordism describes economy, uh, economics, excuse me, and social systems based on on large-scale standardized mass production and mass consumption. Post-Fordism uh, is now argued to be a dominant system of economic production and consumption, although, again, definitions of the nature and scope of post-Fordism vary considerably. Commentators refer to uh, features such as small batch production specialized products and jobs, new information technology, and the growth of service employment. Certainly, the capitalist production has become increasingly global with complex supply chains in which special, specialized plants located in a large number of countries each produce components that are finally assembled into complete products. Some capitalist uh, firms might operate under the constraints constraints of dog eat dog cutthroat co competition, whereas others might be organized into large cartels that carefully control competition for mutual advantage. Capitalism can be mean, as depicted in the uh, Charles Dickens with with most families ecking out a miserable existence on low wages and long hours of work. Or it can be more generous with a strong unionized workplace or workforce demanding good working conditions, adequate pay, and with a social safety net that can take care of aged persons, persons with disabilities and children. And again, today, capitalism is increasingly global with relatively few unionized and Comparatively well-paid workers in the rich nation, uh, in the rich nations, while many of the components, par component parts, are produced uh, in sweatshops and with low pay and hazardous working conditions in developing nations, capitalist system systems can perform well, offering rising living standards for most people, and they can collapse into great depressions as they did in the 1930s. They can grow fairly rapidly for long periods, Italy after 1960, or Japan until 1990. Or they can stagnate with low, with slow growth in Japan after 1990, most Western nations after the global financial crisis of 2008. Finally, capitalist systems can have big, big governments that actively manage the economy and the benefits uh, to the benefit of the majority of the population or they can have neoliberal governments that cater to the rich and powerful, even as majority of the population, or they can have, wait, I read that, even as unemployment and poverty raise, uh, rates rise. 
Thus, there are many capitalist capitalisms and not one single kind of capitalism. Finally, even if we recognize that there are many forms of capitalism, it is equally important to realize that capitalism is by no means the only kind of economic system, as we discuss in the following sections, how humans have capital capitalism, wait, uh, have lived in other kinds of systems and might choose to live in a new systems in the future. We begin with a brief examination of other forms of economic organization before providing an outline of the development of capitalism. Let's see. 3.3, travel, travel, tribal society. Historically, the humans lived first and for the longest period in a tribal society. Both Native Americans and Native Australians, for example, lived in various varieties there we go, of tribal forms of organization at the level of being invaded by Europeans, as had all Europeans until the rise of Greece and Rome a few thousand years later, or a few thousand years ago. While recognizing that there are many forms of tribal societies we can generalize because they did share many character characteristics, at least in the early stages of their development. First, tribes operate as uh, egalitarian, um, hum humonal, uh, kingship-based social organizations. Members of tribes were related by blood with rules regar regarding marriage, initiation into adulthood and adoption of new members who were not relative, related by blood and expulsion. And, okay, egalitarian society is one in which members can equal, uh, members have equal rights and responsibilities, although they could be gender-specific and age-specific distinctions. It should also be noted that some tribal societies also pr practice, uh, practiced slavery. Generally, captured enemies were enslaved, killed, or adopted, so that uh, egalitarianism did not apply to all those living with the tribe. Typically, tribal societies was uh, matri matrilineal, uh, whose heritage was traced through the mother's side, and Metro, matrilocal. Yes, yeah, some sometimes my, my my pronunciation of words is not correct, obviously, or mum, or mumbled as it just was. Um, anyway, so upon marriage, the male joined the female's family. Although there was also examples of, okay, so again, uh, patrilineal or lineage traced through a father's side, uh, and. Also, uh, patrol, patrol local, I guess, wife joined the uh, husband's family tribes. Family, oh, family, excuse me. Finally, a communal society is one in which a production and distribution are un undertaken by all members according to we uh, well-defined rules of participation. In other words, an individual or individual family would not be responsible uh, for deciding what, what to produce, how to produce it, and when and how to consume the production. Instead, the tribe would decide what to produce, how to produce, and how to distribute to the fruits of the tribe's uh, labor uh, among its members. These decisions would follow custom although ad uh, adaptations would be made over time. The great uh, anthropologist Margaret Mead observed the complex rules of adopting uh, adopted by a particular tribe regarding distribution of the meat from a hunt and of uh, crops from farming. The modern Westerners, uh, it appears strange, but the hunter who killed the game was not allowed to eat it, but rather had to turn it over to a specific kin. The hunter's family would eat meat provided by other kin. This uh, reciprocal uh, obligation achieved the local purpose of binding members of the tribe together through mutual reliance. This is there is some dispute over the possibility that tribal societies made use of practices that might approximate market activity. It is doubtful that. 
marker uh, markers markets would be emerged uh, within a tribal be, uh, within a tribe because production and distribution followed c communal practice, and uh, an indiv individual would not decide to produce something in order to sell it or formally exchange it with another producer in the same tribe for some other item. Production and distribution decisions were made communally, so there were so there would be no need to exchange essential items. It is, however, well known that members of tribal society had liberated liberated ceremonies of gift exchange, something like Christmas gift giving, but the item exchanges exchanged usually had little practical value. Most likely purpose of these ceremonies was again to bring the members of the tribe together to enhance social relationships. Further, it was so further, yeah, further, uh, it would it was common to offer gifts to the family of the bride, bride at marriage ceremonies, often called bride price. However, and to view this as a market, uh, as a market in which one buys a bride certainly seems to be erroneous. Perhaps the tribe acti activity that comes closely to something that we might be willing to view as market exchange was the practice of uh, gift giving. Uh, gift giving, however, tribes. Some researchers have claimed that there are examples in which some exchanges involved the giving of useful items that the receiving tribe would not otherwise be able to obtain. For example, one tribe that lives in a rainforest might offer produ products that can only be produced from the rainforest. Resources, while another tribe that lives on grassland plain offers produce and produce from a pro product, however, a produce uh, from its environment. In this case, the exchange of gifts is mutually beneficial in terms of uh, improving uh, living standards in each tribe while also enhancing the social relations between the two tribes, reducing welfare or uh, warfare, excuse me. Some might view this as akin to a money moneyless market exchange called, called bar, uh, barter. Even so, it is obvious that most provisioning it, uh, is, is done within the tribe, not between tribes. And through com communal uh, production and distribution, that does not involve markets. Thus, these exchange exchanges were more likely to be ceremonial or symbolic than comprising a significant part of the participants' uh, upkeep. There is little evidence that activity within tribal society that came close to markets with sales and purchases and utilizing, utilizing IOUs that denominated in the money that, of account. We're right back. Hey, and welcome back. Now we are on uh, slavery, which is in section 3.4. We noted that slavery existed in some tribal societies. There were also entire economies that were based on slavery, societies in which a large portion of the production of the essentials of life was done by the slaves. A relatively recent and well-known slave society existed in the southern states of the U.S. until the Civil War of, 19, of 1860s. Students are probably also familiar with the slave-owning societies of Greece and Rome. In some societies, production des decisions are mostly, mostly made by the owners of the slaves, who, are, who also own the output of the, of the slaves. Slaves can also be bought and sold in markets, although there can be wide variations in the law governing the treatment of slaves and their families. Typically, production by slaves is mostly used for consumption by the owner of the slaves and for subsistence of the slaves. However, slave production can also be used to provide goods and even services which are sold in the market. Like tribal society and capitalist society, there are different forms of slavery society, a slave society. 
Some are mo some are much harsher in their treatment of the, of slaves. Some allow greater freedom for slavery or slaves, or at least for their children. Some allow slaves to gain freedom with access to human rights enjoyed by other members of the society. The U.S. version of the slavery of slavery, not the slavery, but slavery. I was particularly repulsive because it was combined with and justified by vir virulent racism that denied that black folks or blacks, excuse me, could even be considered human. By contrast, slavery in the Asian societies were not based on racism, meaning that freed slaves can gain rights of citizenship. However, the most important points to recognize about slave society is that it is operated for the benefit of the slave owners that are relatively few in number, and that the typically large number of slaves recognize that their lives would, would improve through revolution and emancipation. Even if, even in the most enlightened form of slave society, for, uh, force is required to preserve slavery. Further, because most of the benefits go to the owners of the slaves, there are there is little incentive for slaves to increase Productivity and expand output. Overseers are required to ensure at least a minimum work effort. Technological technological advance tends to be slow, both because slaves have little incentive or opportunity to innovate, and because more complex means of production are typically easier to break and more costly to repair. Slaves could uh, could get back at their masters by throwing a, mon a monkey wrench into the gears. Slave uh, societies are inherently weak and subject to revolt. Many students will recall the name of the most uh, most famous slave to lead the revolt, Spartacus. When faced with a military invasion, slave societies typically cannot arm slaves out of fear that their weapons would be turned against slave owners. Further, slaves are likely to be likely to use. Okay, let's turn the page here. But from 41 to 42, obviously, it was the opportunity of the invasion to initiate their own revolt. Thus, the state is unable to dedicate all its resources against the external threat, instead needing to maintain or even boost the forces retained to uh, for, boost the forces retained to deter slave revolt. For these reasons, slave societies tend to be unstable. Kind of like how the police have been upgraded to almost military uh, these days in pretty much every city in the United States. And that's my thought, anyway. Anyway, so we're on to feudalism in 3.5, again, page 42. Most students are, are at least passingly familiar with another important economic system called feudalism. In Western Europe, the feudal period more or less co coincided with the time period called the Middle Ages or Medieval period, but it is more accurate to use the term feudalism. Knights and castles, lords and peasants, uh, uh, sword battles, and jousting marches, uh, matches are all part of the Western lore, which have been passed down for generations. Western and Euro uh, Eastern Europe, as well as China and Japan, had each had a long experience with their own version versions of feudal society. In Western Europe, feudal society emerged out of the fall of Rome in the fifth century because, or BC, and lasted for a thousand years. Uh, for a thousand years. Although its institutions were beginning to break down by the 11th century with the uh, nascent capitalism, uh, yeah, capitalism, uh, let's see, beginning to replace feudalism from the, from the 13th to the 17th century, depending on the region, as it always, the, as is always the case, one cannot put an exact date on, on that exact date on either on the beginning of the economic system or on its demise. As always, as and as always, there are different versions of the system we all we call feudalism. For Western Europe, the most characteristic form uh, reached us reached its peak between seventh and the eleventh centuries. 
The two uh, primary classes were the peasants and the feudal feudal lords. The peasants had the right to agricultural land, which was based on custom uh, uh, with the periodic distribution of the land among the peasants to account for changes in family size, fertilized of the land, and so on. Claims to the land could typically went back as far as memories permitted, uh, perhaps even pr to pre-Roman uh, travel society times. Planting and harvesting were still typically done communally as a tribal society, but each family would re receive the output of the land to which they were assigned. The right to form the land should not be confused with modern conceptions of ownerships, uh, ownership of land, for a family with uh, was not free to alienate, sell, and land. Indeed, uh, for a family was not free to alienate, uh, which is sell land. Indeed, a fa indeed a family could leave the region and generations later in their and uh, later in higher. Uh, or hair, and however you call that, uh, could return to claim a right to farm the land uh, land based on the family's ancient customary right, even after a market in land had developed. The institutions of transform transform transferable fear, land uh, ownership and private properties uh, proper private property. There we go. Uh, were consistent with the feudal system, and once these developed, uh, they were helped to bring an end to feudalism. The relatively small upper class consisted of the feudal lords, and in some cases they also had a uh, customary right to the land in the region. Because lords didn't work, peasants were expected to work the lords allocated land and to turn the pro produce over to the lord. The labor required to work the Lord's allocated land was called rent. Importantly, the surplus production ex uh, expropriated by the Lord per, uh, per his rights under the uh, man manoral uh, system was separated in time and space from the labor of production necessary to the worker to uh, guarantee their own subs substance. This is a crucial step towards uh, extrapolate, extrapolating labor into commodity that could be bought and sold uh, as, under, as under Marxist interpretation of capitalism. In other cases, the lords did not have a right to the land, but rather exercised a right based in custom to a uh, portion of the output of each peasant's land. This portion was also called rent, paid in the form of agricultural output, the knights and other armed men who had sw uh, sworn allegiance to the Lord and forced his customs through the threat of force in the service of the sheriff, who was charged by the Lord to collect rent. Over time, rents were gradually converted to money rents. Roman and Greek societies had money and indeed had used coins. While these were scarce in the early days of feudalism and were not necessary for the not necessary for the maintenance of feudal relations. As coins and other forms of money became more common, lords would, would agree to accept them. Like the institution of private property in land, the growing use of money also helped to break down feudal society. The payment of rent is often presented as an exchange in which the peasants are buying protection from the feudal lord. In some respects, this was true. The threat of the feudal lords' armed forces did serve to uh, dissuade and recede was from their own feudal lord and his knights. Much as a storekeeper buying protection from, from a mafia game today, the payment of protect, protection money ensures that the mafio, mafiosi, uh, mafio, mafiosi or mafioso one of the two, will prevent other gangs from using threats and violence uh, to extort money. However, if the storekeeper doesn't pay, then uh, mafiosi uh, themselves will assuredly break the shopkeeper's leg, threaten his family, or even set the store on fire. Similarly, similarly if the peasant refused to pay rent, the knights would attack. 
If the peasant did did pay, the knights would protect the peasant from attack by other knights, the lesser of the two evils. The peasants would have been happier without the need for protection from any of the regal lords and knights, just as the storekeeper would be better off without rival mafia gangs. There we go. And if you like uh, the reading from the MMT macroeconomic books, uh, I'm currently reading to you. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, uh, like, share, comment, and yeah, if you want to, you can also buy the book on uh, Amazon and follow along. Again, this is by uh, William Bill Mitchell, uh, L. Randall Ray, and Martin Watts. And uh, I'm trying to find out what the name of the book that L. Randall Ray is coming out, but uh, I'm told that it's similar to, uh, as far as like language, stuff of nature, uh, as um. Stevie Chelton's uh, deficit myth, or the deficit myth, excuse me. Anyway, so back to back to the ring. So we're now on 3.6, again on page 43, uh, revolts and the transition to capitalism. Again, just as in the case of slavery, it was not difficult for the peasants to uh, conclude that they would be better off without the feudal lands, or lords, excuse me. Hence, just as there were con uh, continual revolts by slaves and slave society peasants revolted uh, periodic periodically against lords, the English peasants' revolts uh, took place in 1381 and were moderately successful at forcing concessions from the lords. The movie Braveheart depicts a 13th century peasant revolt that was also uh, nationalistic to, as peasants sought to drive out foreign lords and their ar armies. By the time, many changes had already occurred in the nature of the European feudalist feudalism. Me, one important change was the increasingly common practices of paying rent in the form of, mon of money or dominated IOUs. Another change was that change that was advanced by the 1381 revolt was the recognition of property rights in land, moving towards uh, alienable alienability of land. This, combined with the enclosure movement, helped to bring an end to the feudal system in Europe. The enclosure mo uh, movement is fairly well known as the students of economic uh, uh, economics. Originally, a portion of the land in each region was preserved as a commons containing forest, pastures, wetlands, and other land that was not farmed. The commons were important to peasant families and, uh, as a source of wood for buildings and fires, for game and for grazing cattle. However, feudal lords uh, over time gradually exerted a claim to the commons using the threat of force to keep the peasants out. The lords also claimed all the game and other resources of the commons. The enclosure, that is, seizing and the commons made an already difficult life truly unbearable for the peasants. They can no longer supplement their meals with game, they could no, uh, they could not collect wood, and they could not, um, they could not uh, graze their cattle. As a result, some would look for paid work to supplement their meager output from farming. Some would even sell their land and abandon farming altogether. Wage receipts and uh, rece wage receipts and receipts from the sale of land would often end up in the hands of the feudal lords as peasants paid overdue rent. As we can see, portions of the economy make increasingly monetized as feudal relations be broke down. Working for wages became more common, payment of rents uh, in money form uh, rather than in terms of labor or agricultural produce, uh, produce became more common. Land was bought and sold, displacing the uh, customary rights to the land. At the time, at the same time, cities were becoming more important, acting as magnets for peasants who were leaving the land in cities. Um, wait, hold on, this is, uh, 
leaving the land in cities, one could perhaps find a position as an apprentice in a handcraft, uh, handicraft shop, learning skills, producing furniture, silverware, and sh or shoes. With luck and hard work, one might advance to a position as a master craftsman. Markets became increasingly important through specialization. Uh, for example, the craftsmen would produce shoes for markets and use the proceeds from the sales to purchase food and other necessities, and perhaps even some luxuries. Peasants, too, could sell a portion of their output, paying money rent, and perhaps purchasing some consumer items. They had previously made themselves and uh, themselves or had done without markets and markets of money became increasingly important. In addition to the enclosed movement, other tactics were used to enforce some peasants from their land. Some were chased off through violent attacks by the armies of lords and kings. Others were displaced by the seizure of the Catholic Church lands. The Catholic Church was far was by far the largest feudal lord, exerting control over and collecting rent from the vast areas. After a dispute with the Vatican, King Henry VIII confiscated the church's land in England. As a consequence, some peasants left their land voluntarily because they could no longer support their families, while others lost their land to creditors through excessive debt burdens. In the 18th and 19th century, the highland regions of Scotland were deliberately cleared of population with great brutality by the landowners who desire greater income from their built from holdings. The vacated land could then be consolidated for pastures, particularly for sheep. The wool was uh, was shipped to the growing textile manufacturing industry at the same time the displaced peasants had to find an alternative means of livelihood. So many were converted to wage laborers working in those same manufacturing industries. There were a gradual transformation of the economy to something that looks a lot more familiar. Employment, marketed output, cities, and even factories. Rather than an economy based on lord and peasants, we use workers and their employers, the, the capitalists, even in the agricultural area that were pre predominantly feudal landowners, increasingly employed wage labor rather than peasants to work what the fields and tend the herds, a rising portion of output went to market. Marketing output seeks profits merging the in terms of the money account, while markets and money denominated sales and money denominated liabilities are thousands of years old, they have never denominated or uh, dominated the economy previously, most uh, most people's livelihoods over the previous centuries had not depended on producing marketable output. Most consumption had been satisfied by direct production by the consumer or by their extended family. With the breakdown of feudalism, all of that began to change rapidly. Uh, 3.7. Capitalism. Capitalist mode of production was altogether different from all previous econ economic systems. Following the development of capitalism, most producers or workers had no rights uh, to the things they produced. They worked with tools and ma machinery owned by others. The capitalists, indeed, most workers could not uh, have produced much at all unless they, worked, uh, unless they worked for capitalists. Because they had no other access to the necessary to tools and machines, this is very different from the feudal society in which peasants had a customary right to the land that was necessary for agricultural production for a sub substance. The worker under the worker under capitalism had no right to the means of production and hence no means of security uh, livelihood unless they had convinced an owner of the uh, the means of production or capitalism to employ them for wages. There is no guarantee that the workers will manage to obtain employment or uh, no guarantee and no guarantee that even if they do, their the wage would be sufficient uh, would will be sufficient to produce an agreeable living standard. While workers are sometimes called wage slaves, capitalism de deviates in important ways from a slave society. 
it is true that slaves uh, in the slave society also had to work for somebody who generally did not own the tools they used and did not own the output they produced. However, slaves were never employed, uh, unemployed. If any, if an owner did not need a slave, the slave would be sold to someone who did. Further, a slave would, could not normally quit and search for a different owner. Workers are usually free to quit their jobs to seek alternative employment. However, they can become unemployed because they cannot, they cannot force capitalists to hire them. In contrast uh, to the feudal, uh, the feudal system in ca uh, capitalism, surplus production is not separated in time and space from the production required to maintain the subs subsistence for workers. Both are created by the day's work and surplus accrued to the capitalist by dint of their ownership of the means of production rather than a result of a, a manual rights. Let's see. In wait a minute. Um, okay, yeah. In mean capitalism systems, unemployed uh, workers and their families would starve. In a slave society, by contrast, the rational owner of the slave would provide at least substance uh, substance level of necess necessities to protect their investment, their human property. Still, wage slavery, working for wages, is surely better than true slavery, in which. Humans are reduced to the statutes, uh, statutes of being the, or status of being proper of the property of others. All pre-capitalist societies experience uh, change through time, consumes and uh, customs and, and beliefs involved. Technology, including the ma uh, machines, the types of things, uh, the types of things, and how. They were consumed, changed the population, migrated, civilization rose and then fell. Change has uh, always been part of the human life. However, the pace of this change accelerated almost unimaginably under capitalism. In previous forms of uh, economic organization, children could expect to live a life not no noticeably different from the life led by their parents, not uh, their grandparents, or even uh, their great grandparents. Economic uh, economic growth and the sense of output of the production of this means of substance generally occur over time, but it was so slow that it was barely noticed. Capitalism changed all that. While it certainly not true to state that the capitalism always and wait. Uh, capitalism always and everywhere improved living standards that were a uh, nearly inexplorable long-term trend towards increasing increased output that cannot be overlooked. In a very real sense, the whole dis discipline of economics was created with the rise of capitalism in order to make sense of this new, continually changing, changing from society, form of society. Often, the standard of living uh, of one's children would be very different from the other or from that of their parents, and certainly the children would face a new array of pro products and jobs that could not have been imagined by, the, by their parents just 20 years earlier. The changes were obvious and required the development of a field of social science that would explain the forces that drove them. Capitalism represents a social re uh, revolution and indeed the uh, institutionalization of uh, mechanisms that ensure continuing change at a relatively rapid pace. It is very difficult for us to comprehend how rapid change is today when compared to the experience of all generations of humans uh, prior to the rise of capitalism. There are people also uh, people alive today in Australia and America who mostly traveled by horse-drawn carriage and uh, who lived in sod houses and who didn't who did without radio and television when they were young. However, we should not be misled into thinking that, that living through a rapid change is unique to the past uh, half century. A similar pace of change was present even. In the days uh, early, in the early days of capitalism, the application of the term industrial revolution, uh, revolutions plural, because there were uh, more than one, 
reflects the per perceived pace of change, which was so fast and dramatic that it resembled revolution. Even those great critics of capitalism, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, conceded that capitalism had unleashed the force of production in a novel, unprecedented, uh, unprecedented manner. The bourgeoisie, during its rule of scarce uh, 100 years, had has created more massive and more colossal production, productive forces than have all preceding generations together. Subjection, uh, subjection of nature's force to man machinery, application of chemistry to the industry and agriculture, stem steam navigation, railways, electric, uh, electric telegrams, uh, telegraphs, excuse me, clearing of whole continents for cultivation. Uh, colonization of rivers while population it con conjured out of the ground. What earlier century had even a present presentment that made that such productive forces slumbered in the lap of social labor? Marx and Engel, 1848. These words came from the Communist Manifesto of 1848, which went on to proclaim. The weapons with which the bourgeoisie felled, uh, felled feudalism to the ground are now turned against the bourgeoisie itself. But only, but not only has the bourgeoisie forged and forged the weapons they brought that that bring that bring death to itself. It has also called into existence the men who are the wheel uh, who are to wield those weapons. The modern working class, the Proletarians, Marx and Engels, 1848. Note: Engels and Marx celebrate both the rise of the monumental production, a productive force of social labor, and declare that social labor, the proletarian, will prove to be capitalist undoing. Before we turn to the death of capitalism, let us look in some detail at the capitalist system in which most of the people of the world live today. Uh, 3.8 mon uh, monetary capitalism, and I will be right back. And welcome back. Now we are on uh, 3.7 capitalism, I believe. Or, no, I'm sorry, wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I think one uh, two point eight monetary capitalism. Yeah, uh, capitalism is also very different from all previous economic systems because of its thoroughly monetized nature. Monetary nature. We have hinted that money and markets uh, long pre predate capitalism. However, what is important about capitalism is that. The purpose of in production is different. In all other previous ec uh, economic system, the me immediate purpose of production was to generate real goods and services to be consumed, to be consumed by the producers, members of the tribe, slavers, uh, slavers, excuse me, slaves, peasants, and by others, feudal lords and their knights, kings and queens, slave owners. Uh, Ecclesiastical, I don't know how you pronounce that, officials, and so on. It is true that a portion of production was always dedicated to investments and better tools, uh, machines, and infrastructure to ensure more e uh, efficient um, future production of goods and services. These deferred benefits were not available for immediate consumption by, other, by their producers. Also, depending on the working arrangements, some goods were produced by sale in markets even before capitalism. However, the majority of production never entered markets, but rather was the was for the direct or even if not immediate dissatisfaction of the tribe. The peasants and the lord on the feudal manor, or the slaves and slave owners, and most of the goods and services consumed by the produ producers were not purchased in, in markets. The capitalist form of production is undertaken to sell output and to make monetary profit. It is true that the producer uh, produced goods and services will be consumed or uh, or form 
part of the productive capacity to supply future consumptions. However, this takes place only once they are sold. Further, the production will not occur in the first place unless the capitalist who owns the means of production believes the goods and services can be sold at a profitable price. No matter how badly the population needs to consume or wants to work, the production will uh, not occur unless it is deemed profitable. Yeah. Uh, let's see, page 46. Uh, not only is money the goal of, produc uh, of production, it is also needed to allow produ pro production to proceed in the first place. Marx famously described the capitalist production sequence as M uh, C M production begins with money being used to purchase of all the inputs to the production process, including equipment, raw materials, and labor. This is presented by the initial M. The production process results in production of commodities. The, these are goods and services that will be sold in the market. They include outputs that is sold directly to consumers. These are goods and services that will be sold in the market. Oh, wait, uh, consumers. Uh, as well as output sold to to other firms to be used in other production processes. If all good all goes according to plan, the commodities will be uh, be sold at a sufficiently high price to reap profits. This requires that the total value of money received in sales or M is cr greater than the t total value of money used to engage in the production process. Also, M. This profits requires that M equals M. You can see that there are two main barriers to production process that must be over, uh, overcome. First, the accomplice must must be able to obtain money finance uh, to be to begin production, and second, the accomplice must believe that sales of production uh, production will generate money pr pr profits. M equals M. Production can be prevented by uh, prevented by uh, from by either barrier. Hence, in the monetary production economy, pr production begins with money on the expectation that the capital capitalist will end up with more money. In the uh, uh, in an uh, important sense, then money can be blamed for unemployment. Both of labor and other resources, these resources will sit idle. When a capitalist either cannot obtain money to start the production process or if they believe that the production will not be sufficiently profitable in terms of money. 3.9 Global Capitalization. No, capitalization, excuse me, capitalism. Capitalization, anyway. As capitalism evolve, uh, evolved, more of the product process was brought into the market in the early days of capitalism. The family of the worker, uh, the worker might still produce a large proportion of the goods it, cons uh, it consumed. Milk, cream, and butter would come from the family's cow. The garden produced vegetables, eggs from the chicken, and much of uh, their clothing and, and bedding would be made at home. Few services were produced in the market. However, there is a tendency for the capitalist form of production to continually ex expand into new areas in the pursuit of profitable, uh, profitable opportunities. Today, in modern developed capitalism countries, food mostly comes from global ag agribusiness. Uh, clothing is produced by large conglomerates employed, employing cheap labor in Asia, and many of the services that households formerly performed for themselves are now bought in the market. For example, today, in most U.S. Suburb, suburbs, even uh, even working class uh, families hire gardening firms to mow the lawns. This service would have been purchased only by the rich a few generations ago. Not only does the capitalism become more intensive in the sense that it continually expands its re reach into new markets within a nation, but it also becomes more extensive as it spreads over the globe and seeks to bring all potential consumers into the capitalist form of production. Beginning less than five, five centuries ago in Northern Europe, the capitalist mode of production now dominates production almost everywhere in the world. 
Further, as mentioned above, production increasing, uh, increasingly takes the form of international supply chains. For example, the car parts that go to the mar- to make up the typical fin- the final produ- product uh, or produce a factories all over the world, a major firm such as Ford and Motor Company would have uh, will have many subsidiaries or even unaffiliated suppliers on contract producing parts in numerous countries with the final assembly taking place in the identifiable Ford plant. The components of Apple's iPhone are largely produced in low wage workers in, uh, by low wage workers in Asia. Although the high value of software and uh, marketing uh, and wait, yeah, and marketing jobs are local, local lo- located in California, it is thus increasingly difficult to say exactly where production make takes production takes place, uh, which creates problems for regulators concerned with enforcing labor standards and for tax authorities. The rise of international supply chains adds force to the globalization effect of capitalism as developed nations find it difficult to resist the demands of multinationals which might provide the job and development they want to attract. However, we should not uh, overstate the importance of capitalist production even in the most developed nations such as the U- such as the US and Australia, much of the production that is absolutely essential for such uh, for, for social survival takes place outside the capitalist enterprises. First, households still produce many of the goods and ser- uh, goods and especially the services required to produce or to support, excuse me, the family. Uh, rearing children, cooking meals, routine maintenance of housing, gardening, financial services, balancing the family budget and entertainment, uh, and of and by each other, and so on. Even if the much of the even if much of this could be purchased in uh, external markets, families perceive uh, quality differences and also enjoy working together. It is possible that the healthy family life requires that a large portion of each activity be preserved from the reach of the marketplace, a market system. Second, we. As we emphasize throughout this text, much of the production is better better suited by, to the public organization and provision rather than to for-profit production. Since the 1970s, there have been a strong push by neoliberal politicians and think tanks to downsize government while either abandoning its responsibility or, con- or contracting our services to bri- private firms. This is justified by the claims that private firms are more efficient and that the market produces the right incentives. In some cases, this is probably true, but in many cases, other, uh, other, and it opens the way for abuse, cronyism, and corruption. Further, since private firms are profit seeking, they rationalize, prefer, prefer to prov- uh, provide uh, goods and services to those who. Are willing to pay can afford to pay for those reasons that they will always be room for production outside on the market by families by government and by non not-for-profit organizations to meet needs that were not fulfilled by the uh, profit of production the first and the, the first excuse me the push for globalization has has been very strong since 1970s as evident by various uh, free trade deals in the case of the U.S. and its neighbors, an important uh, recent development was NAFTA, which came into force in 1994. There was a similar period of globalization at the end of the 19th century. In both cases, imports and exports became relatively more important, and huge international corporations took substantial control of the international trade both the 19th century and late 19th century in the recent decades. Finance was also international internationally to a great extent. That earlier period of globalization and the associated development of international finance collapsed in the Great Depression in the 1930s. The U.S. and other countries reacted by reforming finance, downsizing it, and, ex- and ex- exerting more control over it through regulation. International trade became somewhat less important and trade barriers were restored. In the post-Second World War era, however, over time, production, sales, and finance gradually became global, even more 
so than they have been in the early early 2000, uh, 20th century. Excuse me. The GFC temporarily slowed the advance of global uh, capitalization capitalism. However, the rescue of the global financial institutions, as well as some alien huge global non-financial or corporations such as General Motors by the federal, U.S. federal government, seems to have renewed its advance. Uh, advance. Globalization became a major uh, campaign, campaign issue in the U.S. presidential election cycle of 2016, as both Bernie Sanders from the left and Donald Trump from the right attacked multinational corporations who were who are said to have moved jobs out of the U.S. to nations with cheap labor. With both Trump's win and uh, Brexit, when the U.K. voted to leave the, U, uh, the EU, many observers were predicting the, that path that the pace of globalization might slow. uh, 3.10, economic systems of the future. All uh, economic systems evolved, but but it is important, it's impossible to predict the direction of change. We can be sure that the the economy will look different 100 years from now, but we do not know how those differences will manifest. From the vintage point of the early 21st century, the form takes, taken by capitalism in the major developed, developed countries appear to be environmentally and socially unsustainable. In late chapters, we will explore some of the social problems, particularly in unemployment, inequality, and poverty, that, a, that result from the way that many modern economy, the economies function today. Undoubtedly, capitalism will continue to change and, and form and foreign policy can help to resolve these sorts of problems. However, many critics of capitalism foresee a day when capitalism will be replaced by alternative economic and social and political systems. <clears throat> we will briefly outline such uh, two such systems, socialism and communism. We will distinct distinguish these from capitalism and economic systems from each other. Our definitions... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I'm glad that happened later on. Anyway, our definitions follow those usually used by the major advocates of such systems. However, it must be noted that the following is necessarily conjectural, conjectural, sorry, because we are describing possible future economic systems and we have no way of knowing how things will eventuate. Finally, we realize that mo- the much controversial and confusion around these and these terms. This is in part because of several real world societies have ver- variously uh, claimed to be socialist or communist, or be accused by others of being socialist or communist, but varying degrees. And accurately, here we are set out clear uh, out clear definitions that are not meant to describe any of these real world economic uh, economies. A socialist economy system is one in which the means of production are collectively owned. In such a system, there are no f- uh, functioning capitalists because private ownership of the means of production is prohibited. To be sure, there is no there is still private ownership of clothing, of automobiles, of housing, and perhaps even of small family farms. However, a significant share of the means of production is not privately owned. Without private ownership of the means of production, there is no significant pri- uh, private employment of either humans, uh, em- wait, of other humans, excuse me, employment of family members or perhaps other within others within the household or or are uh, or on a family farm might be permitted. Most workers would be employed in organizations with collective ownership of the means of production. All alternative arrangements would be possible at one extreme the workers the collective would share uh, communal ownership of the factory and all of its associated tools buildings financial assets and so on the collective would make all production decisions what to produce how to produce it and how to price it at the other extreme all means of production would be owned and managed by the workers of the na- of the nation as a whole Decisions concerning what to produce, how to produce it, and how to price it would be made at the level of the nation as a whole. Wait a minute, okay, I think we just read that. 
would be achieved na- uh, national goals. Unlike capitalism, there we go. Production would not be undertaken with a view to obtain monetary pr- profits. As a simple example of the difference between the systems in the socialist economy, necessities of clo- food, clothing, shelter, medical care, and education would be assigned significantly assign significantly low prices that are that all members of society could afford uh, afford them prices of luxury goods or uh, or of harmful products and practices tobacco gambling would be at a high enough to discourage to discourage their use by contrast in capitalism uh, capitalist economy prices are to, are set to assure that capitalist owners of firms achieve their desired profits a communist, uh, uh, a communist economy uh, system shares some of the characteristics of socialist uh, system. There are no capital capitalists, no private ownership of the means of production. A further assumption is that all aspire to be workers, and the practice of privately uh, employing other humans is abhorrent to all members of society. All production decisions are are made democratically unlike socials. There is no need for wages or prices because all production is free, freely and universally available to all. The, for, uh, the forces of production are, too, are so great that all material needs and desires are easily satisfied. Hence, there is no reason for a rational output. A rational output, excuse me. Uh, further, many of the social problems that spur Conspicuous consumption and invidious distinction will have been removed from society. Hence, the sort of uh, pro- pro- profligate consumption, a uh, shop till you drop, that is a common or uh, even tacitly encouraged in developed cap- uh, capitalist economies, will have disappeared. Rather than shopping malls, uh, glassy, uh, glossy advertisements that try to lure families to consume more than they need or really want. There will be co- communal warehouses at which families can obtain whatever they need. In addition, the threat of deprivation will not be needed in order to pr- induce people to work. Uh, all will want to contribute to a society that will provide that provides for their every need. And hence, all will voluntarily participate in the social production process to the best of their ability. There is a very simple way to distinguish between socialism, socialist and communist societies. Socialism provides the transition from capitalism to communism, uh, communism, uh, communism uh, and in that system, the individual producer receives back from society after the deduction has been made. Exactly what he gives to it, Marx, eighteen seventy-five. Uh, I guess page ten or whatever. In other words, the distribution of social output is largely determined by the contribution to the production process. This means that inequality of the distribu- distribution of output will continue to and will continue under socialism. Those who produce more will receive more, while the distri- distri- distribution will be less. Unequal than the distribution under capitalism, some inequality will remain. Of course, such as such as in other econ- economic systems, uh, there will be some who cannot produce very much. For example, people with disabilities or people too young to, or too old to work. Our our parents with young children m- might not be able to contribute very much to the production process. Thus, there will be some deviation from the socialist model to ensure that all receive necess- necessities. The model of communism is from uh, from each other, each uh, uh, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. Marx, uh, eighteen seventy five eleven. In this case, there is no attempt and no need to a ration uh, ration output on the basis of the contribution. Two, the members of each of each of members of such a system would not or will not have unreasonable desires. Each will take only what they need. Compulsion is not needed because each will contribute as much as they can. I think I've read that a couple of times. Actually, it seems like, but whatever. Uh, if we compare either of these systems to com- uh, capitalism, it is obvious that there are big differences. 
In the capitalist system, one's income includes earnings that are due to one's ownership of the means of production, which allows one to employ others and receive income generated by the production of others. The capitalist owners receive a profit income not pro, uh, not because they work, but but rather because they own the, uh, the factories and other establishments in the in which production takes the place takes takes a place no takes place. The capitalist system cons concentrated ownership of the means of production in the hands of a few, and then all others must work for the capitalist owners to generate profit income. For them, while it is commonly claimed that capitalism, capitalists also contribute to the production process by providing uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial skills and practice, in practice, these skills can be hired. There will, they, there will be a higher, higher management team, a higher research and development team, and so on. Even after paying all these teams, there will, there still must remain. Profit income or the capitalist owners will not allow their means of production to be used. What the capitalist owners actually provide is the means of production that they have effectively monopolized. Socialism and communism eliminates capitalism income by eliminating private employment and private ownership of the means of production. Conclusion. Well, the uh, economic systems of the future uh, resemble the capitalist that uh, capitalism that dominates today for alternative systems studied in sector in section 3.10 or something new we cannot know there have been some real world experiments to the implement to implement social socialist uh, economy systems the Paris Commune in 1971 the USSR in 1917. China in 1949. So far, it appears that none of these have been able to build a, ver a variable alternative to, ca to capitalism. The Paris Commune was crushed. The USSR collapsed, and China appears to be moving towards capitalism, albeit in a form that is rather different from that in the Western development nations. However, it must be remembered that the transition to capitalism requires more false starts and several hundred years before a replace uh, feudalism throughout Europe. We can be sure that our economic system will can will continue to evolve, so that capitalism will likely undergo many trans transformations in the, in the coming decades. It also must be remembered that tribal society endured for perhaps tens of thousands of years, while feudalism persisted in Europe for about one hundred one thousand years. By comparison, capitalism is still a young upstart, and in in spite of its problems, it has good it is it, it has had a good run so far. The most important point we make we want to make is make as well conclude our brief introduction to economic history is that there is nothing natural about any particular any particular form that our country or that our economy takes. Economic systems are constructed, even if not entirely intentionally, uh, intentionally so, and that means that that means they can be changed if they do not perform well. The, refer uh, the references are uh, Karl Marx, of course, a critique of the uh, the Gotha program, and other things. Anyway, so let's see. Tomorrow it will be Chapter Four: and The System of National Income and Production Accounts. Join me for that as well tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to say thank you again for for joining me. If you have, uh, please subscribe. Please, please subscribe, like, uh, share, comment. Um, check out realprogressive.org. Check out uh, uh, MoslerEconomics.com. Um, check out uh, Stephanie Kelton. Warren Mosler as a whole, uh, and check out on YouTube um, Steve Grumbine on Status Quo, uh, his show Ray to Grumble. He also uh, has uh, a show on uh, realprogressives.org called Macro and Cheese, where he interviews a whole host of different people uh, in different uh, areas of, uh, the, of economics. And other things of that, na that nature. Also on YouTube is uh, Luke Parcher, uh, Parker Parcher. Anyways, I apologize, Chief, apologize for that. But uh, anyway, uh, he has a show also on YouTube. Check him out. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, and um, 
Rogue Scholar, also hosted by Steve Grumbine. Um, anyways, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some education out of it. I will continue doing this until I'm done with the book. I'm not really sure how many chapters are actually in this book. I haven't really looked at that yet, but I was excited to start this, and I'm excited to continue it, and I'm excited to end it when it does end. So again, thank you for listening. Uh, and just as a reminder, I did start this on my talking uh, underscore financially on Anchor. So I did put that link uh, in the description uh, below. And if you want to listen to my to uh, my uh, earlier readings of this book, uh, which not that not that far long ago, uh, maybe a, what last week or so, um, check them out. And uh, hopefully you you'll join me again. Again, share this, subscribe. Uh, comment and hit that like button as well as the bell for more. Uh, thank you and peace out for now.